So we're going to be talking about troubleshooting the very first step in setting up parallelism for your builds. And parallelism is basically allowing you to run a bunch of your tests across a bunch of different containers so that your tests are running at the same time split between those containers and it makes them finish much faster. And to do that, you need to create a list of your tests and then pass that to a command that will split the tests between each of those containers. And the first step is creating that list. And a lot of people get caught up when they're setting up their parallelism. So we're gonna look at how you can quickly troubleshoot anything that's wrong with your list. So this is our example Flask Python project on GitHub. We're gonna be using the CircleCI command line interface that contains some functionality that makes it a little bit easier to create this list of tests. So I have the command here and we're running CircleCI tests glob and then we're giving it a globbing pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. So you'll notice that it did find all of the tests in the test folder, but it also found a bunch of other stuff that we do not want in the list. It found some compiled Python files. It even has some folders listed in there. We don't want any of that. So clearly there is something wrong with our glob and we need to change it to only get the files that we want. So first we're going to tell it we only want files that start with test because that's how our test naming convention is set up. Also, we only want files that end with .py. And if we run this, we should see that it worked. It went into the subfolder and it grabbed all of the tests in there and it grabbed all the tests in the root of the test folder. So that's really great. This is really good. It's a simple way to set up a list of tests that gets split between a bunch of containers. Now, maybe you can't use the circle CI CLI and you want to just use some native commands like ls. You can still do that. We have an ls command here and we're giving it the same globbing pattern. So let's go ahead and run that. And we can see that it also creates a list of the subfolder and the root folder with all of our tests. And then we could pass this along and we could have it split between the containers. So now we can just add this to our config.yml and push it and everything is gonna be perfect in the remote cloud environment, right? Well, it's not always that easy. And so that's why we are going to jump into a container right now. This is a live container running on CircleCI. And let's take a look at some of the commands that we ran locally on our machine and see how they run in the cloud environment. So let's start with the CircleCI CLI tool. We have this in the environment. And if we run it, we can see that we still get the same list of tests. So that's really good. What we were able to see locally is also happening in the cloud environment on the image that we're using. But maybe you don't wanna use the tool. So let's take a look at the LS example. We have the same LS command that we ran locally and we're gonna run it here in the cloud now. And you'll notice that we didn't get the tests that were in the root of the test folder. And the reason for that is because in Bash, they introduced a feature called the glob star. Using the shopped command, we're gonna turn on the glob star. Once we turn it on, it's gonna change the functionality of the double asterisk, and it will tell it to include the files in the root of the globbing pattern that we're using. So I've turned on globbing, and if we run ls again, you'll see that now we get all of the tests that we wanted to run. So when you're setting up parallelism, you wanna make sure that you're only selecting the files that your test runner is going to be able to handle handle. Sometimes people have messed up globbing and they'll start including their node modules folder or they'll be doubling tests and these issues are going to make your builds run longer and it can also cause flakiness or just cause them to fail completely. So by testing the commands that you're running locally and also testing those commands in the remote cloud environment that you're running your tests in, you can see what's happening and save yourself a lot of headaches when you move on to the next steps of setting up parallelism. So that's a Circle CI quick tip. If you enjoyed the video, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more cool videos. And that's it. Thanks for watching.